This is actually the first time that he will have spoken uh, at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. So I want to make the most of the occasion. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kaspar Lawrence Reif uh, is currently the Chief of Staff of Mr. Michael Frieser, who is the Integration Officer of the CDU-CSU Party in the German Parliament. So not only a member of parliaments, but actually what's interesting, Mr. Frieser comes from Nuremberg. Uh, Nuremberg is a city which is also quite relevant as we talk about multiculturalism as well as integration. Uh, Nuremberg is actually the place where the federal agency for migration and refugees is based. Uh, so in that sense, a lot of the policies when it comes to migration and refugees come actually from Nuremberg. Nuremberg itself, 34% of the population has actually a migration background. Uh, so in that sense, the district that Mr. Frieser is from uh, is of course very relevant for the the topic, uh, which is his exp expertise in the Bundestag. Uh, and uh, Kaspar Lawrence Reif has been working with him for a number of years. Uh, he's actually been in the parliament, the German Bundestag, since 2001. And while he's been there, integration has really been a common theme uh, throughout his career. Uh, he initially did his studies in law at the Free University in Berlin, uh, where he also had the chance to have one year in Essex, uh, where he had a chance to work a little bit on his English. And he was uh, very shy about giving the speech in English today, but I'm, I know it'll be excellent uh, from our, our many conversations. And he was initially from Bielefeld. Uh, the topic that uh, Kaspar has chosen is immigration and identification from multiculturalism to proactive integration. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a very, very warm welcome for Mr. Kaspar Lawrence Reif. Thank you for inviting me here, Mark, uh, at the Center for Cultural Diplomacy. It's, uh, I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't, hear, couldn't be here earlier, so I could have seen more of this conference. But anyway, uh, let's get started. I want to, to, to introduce you to the view of the integration officer of the CDU-CSU party at the Bundestag. Uh, on this topic, I divided my presentation, I put it before, into two parts. First, I'm going to develop my main argument, integration needs identification, and as a spoiler, I will even use the often cited word light culture, but perhaps in a different way than you normally hear about it. In the second part, I will give a selection of examples on integration policies and how the federal government under Angela Merkel implanted this main argument. Get right in. Integration needs identification. The differentiation between the host society and the immigrants is essential in our integration debates. Host society sounds impersonal at first, but uh, sounds like a faceless authority but it's not. The host society that are we, the neighbors, the students, the colleagues, we are sitting here. We are the receiving society, or host society as you want to say. We give this society our face and our personality. But what is a connecting we in the, so in the receiving society? What has to be done to be part of it? And uh, that's integration, it's being part of something. The answer is not easy, but uh, we shall not leave the immigrants in uncertainty in what they should integrate themselves into. For a long time, we saw this uncertainty as an evidence of our liberality. When in the beginning of the 60s, Germany's economy called for a workforce, these workers were called Gastarbeiter, or in English you could say guest worker. And compass of integration seemed not to be needed, since we in Germany thought these workers would go home after a few years. But they didn't. In the 70s, the 80s, it was seen as a step towards a positive multicultural society when we had no expectation on these immigrants. Today, we know that this indifference misled us. Its result, uh, exaggerated to the max as a society where on the one hand more and more immigrants get on the losing side, isolate and exclude themselves, and on the on the other hand, uh, and, 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 sorry, and on the other hand, uh, hostility towards foreigners increased, while the willingness to integrate decreased. So, one could say multicultural society sounds more and more like a denial of assistance, as a, perhaps a lawyer would say. It is no good and is no sign of respect for foreign cultures when we demand and expect nothing of the people that come to us. Such a disregard is leaving people alone. So integration without identification is impossible. 
I have to ask the question, what connects us in this we of the receiving society? What makes our identity? I think the we cannot longer be fixed to a religious belief. Billions of fellow citizens would be excluded. Evangel evangelical Christians, Jews, Muslims, Orthodox, Buddhists, Hindus, uh, agnostics, atheists. This uh, argument was also recognized by ex-federal president Christian Wolff in his memorable speech when he declared that the Islam belongs to Germany. Also, uh, uniform customs or habits are not the we. Everyone can dress as he or she wants and eat what he or she wants. It's vegan, kosher, Chinese, Lebanese, Bavarian, so on. Nowadays, we can uh, also be fixed on cultural traditions. For example, there are folk songs. But these are not any longer songs of the entire nation. As I stand next to pop, ethnic rock, Latin music, German music, Schlager music, also other traditions like the Oktoberfest are more a regional phenomena than an all Norwegian, all German tradition. This is, a var 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 this is a variety we mean when we talk about our diverse and individual society. This differs between modern and traditional societies. The dynamic behind our diversity is the freedom. It is as the freedom of individuals, at the same time, the freedom of tradition and conventions. One can own them, but does not have to be bound to it. This modern liberal society is a society we want and uh, we have nowadays. For immigrants of more traditional societies, this uh, colorful and liberal society is a very big challenge. They need to reorientate in a way we cannot imagine. Education and uh, communication of values are even for us not easy in times in which violence and nudity reach out to our children everywhere via internet and via uh, smartphone. To take special care of those people, this is uh, truly, uh, from, from, from these uh, traditional cultures, this is a truly important matter of integration culture, I'd say. For a society in which everyone dresses and undresses as he or she wants, it's remarkable that wearing a shadow dominates the newspapers, but only little is said about how we manage to deal with the psychological burdens and tensions between tradition and modern spirit which exists in uh, many immigrant families. So, uh, you could think that there is no more band connecting us to the we in the host society. But there is, we just have to look in a different area. Unity as a society is possible because we made a constitution and laws for ourselves. We keep on developing them so that our individual freedom can exist next to our neighbor's freedom. We gave us a constitutional law. We set the limit and make the rules about our freedom. This is the heart of our culture and our identity. Who, in that sense, belongs to the German nation, is, no matter what he or she part comes from, is part of a state community which constitutes itself. So, exactly to the max, constitutional patriotism is a justifiable pride at this autonomy. This is the most noble integration offer we can provide for immigrants. But it's important that this offer is accepted. Wanting to be part of the autonomous society and at the same time contradicting its self-given rules is impossible. That is why, for example, forced marriage, stonings, polygamous marriage, honor killing do not fit into our legal system. In the sense, the often scolded term light culture, I would perhaps translate it as a form of guiding culture, perhaps has also a positive side. Light culture as an understanding on cultural features on our constitution. Uh, this should not be misunderstood. <coughs> Adopting specific German expressions of culture may be desirable, but it's not mandatory for integration. Even if it's often falsely argued, integration does not mean assimilation. Everyone shall keep his own culture as long as it's in accordance with our law. Sometimes we have to bend our law that uh, everyone can live in his culture. For example, the most uh, actual part is circumcision. 
there's a big argument about circumcision in, in Germany, and um, now we have to make a new law that allows circumcision for Muslims and Jews. Speaking one's native language next to German is a real gain, not only for the person, but for the whole society. But speaking the German language and slowly becoming familiar with our diverse everyday world, which is also changing constantly, becoming a more European world every day, these are essential for the integration progress. Within the integration debate, I presume it would be a more helpful and a better to speak, not of a light culture, but of a European light culture. In my view, perhaps an interesting thought, considering the task of this uh, Center for Cultural Diplomacy. Let's get to the second part, the practical part. <clears throat> How did we in Germany implement this thought? Until 2005, the so-called Foreigners Commissioner were located in the Ministry of Family. With Angela Merkel's nomination of Professor Maria Böhmer, the position of Commissioner for Migration, Refugees and Integration was set up in the office of the Federal Chancellor and in this way was massif massively enhanced in its status. The fast and direct connection with the Chancellor in the same building is much more effective than, for example, an extra Ministry of Integration, which is uh, demanded in public from time to time. Also in 2005, integration courses were introduced on a, on a compulsory basis. These are mostly language courses in which uh, you get taught level B1 of the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. B1 simply means you can get around a normal life, talk, write a little bit, uh, you get around. I can now present every single measurement of the German integration policy. I want to pick uh, only the most interesting parts, interesting programs, and show how uh, the four mentioned principles were put into practice. First, we have the offensive early chances. <laughs> As always in politics, it's a real bad name for, a, in this time, quite a good action program. In 2011, the initiative offensive early chances started until 2014, the federal government will provide about 400 million euro for up to 4,000 daycare centers in socially troubled areas to cultivate them to daycare centers on language and integration. Second, we have the Integration Summit. 2006, there started uh, different conferences in Berlin's Chancellor office with representatives from immigrant associations as well as all parts of the civic society. Here it's about clarifying the problems of integration together through intensive discussions. Topics are also quite diverse. It's about integration classes, education, situation on women, so on. As a third point, I uh, <coughs> will tell you about the Anerkennungsgesetz, another law that's uh, hardly to translate. You could name it, you could translate it in law on approval of foreign educational achievements. Many immigrants get professional education and degrees in their home countries, which are urgently needed in German employment market. Until now, they were seldom able to use this qualification properly because we had no evaluation and assessment standards. Now we've got those comprehensive unified measurements since 2010-2011. It's quite late, I think. The next point, the pilot project of individual integration agreement. It's about making integration more binding. In this project, 18 cities partake. <coughs> the commune and the immigrant make an integration agreement. They see what specific knowledge the immigrant has when he came to Germany and what uh, individual kind of help he personally needs concerning, for example, language learning, education, child care. On his challenges, the commune makes him an individual offer, but that is binding for the immigrant. So it's give and take. <clears throat> the last point, the integration, the, re the report of integration indicators. For the first time, we have a tool now that shows in different indicators the development of integration. I will make it short, the summit of the last year is there are quite some improvements concerning integration. The report clearly shows 
for example, that a student's social origin is more important than a migration background, if you think, on education. Moreover, the report refers <coughs> the importance of speaking the German language, which again confirms our belief that language is still the key to a successful integration. I want to conclude with a glance into the future. We are on a good way in Germany, but there are still many challenges that shows uh, also the integration report what to do. For example, the access to higher education is quite difficult for many foreigners in Germany. Also in the public service sector, migrants are underrepresented. Then we have the topic of dual citizenship. Now we work uh, with the option model in which children can decide to their 23rd birthday which of the one citizenships they want to have. But the wish, but the wish for, multi, uh, for multi, uh, multiple citizenship is very strong among many migrants, which I can fully understand speaking, uh, especially considering the Europe's merging. A possible alternative for the future could be, for example, the Spanish model we thought about. A cooperation, a Spanish model is a cooperation with uh, 12 South American states, and only the citizenship of the momentarily residents is active. So if uh, one is Colombian and Spanish, if he lives in Spain, he is Spain, he is Spanish. If he lives in Colombia, he is uh, this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope I could uh, clarify in this rather brief summary not only what the German government was doing in the last years. First and foremost, I wanted to explain the foundation and the basic thoughts in migration politics. It's all about the one line. When you live in Germany, you are integrated if you can look for yourself and do something for society. You can live your life as you want or as your tradition tells you to. No assimilation is required. But you have to follow the society-given rules like uh, everyone else. Thank you for your patience. Thank you very much, Casper.